you know, we get motivated or we're motivated in different ways. And the Eagles are getting motivated in a way that I don't know if any other team is getting motivated, has ever got motivated this way. Nick Sirianni is the Eagles head coach, in case you didn't know. And he had this to say about motivating his team and what they're watching. Our fifth core value is fundamentals. And Kobayashi, there's this video of Kobayashi and Joey Chestnut competing, and they go and like, why is Kobayashi, why is Kobayashi so good at eating hot dogs? Well, the detail that and the fundamentals that he puts into it, and you're laughing at so he has to have the right temperature water to dunk the thing. He's got to break the hot dog perfectly in half. And like, so my point on that is like, yeah, we're all seeing this, we're all watching. It's like, what's the point of that? If you want to be the best in the world at what you do, right, on the football field, it comes down to the little things. And that right there was a fundamental talk. So it's all those, how does it go to my, you know, kind of what I want to get across. And, and there's just, we learn from great players in the past and great teams in the past. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, see, we've said it here a million times, Dan. Winning is in the details. It is. It's in the hot dogs. That's what Coach is talking about. Winning is in the details. Yes, McLovin? I'm a little confused because it sounded like practice was still going on right behind him. What's he doing talking to the press? Shouldn't he be (laughs) watching practice? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody else. Now, that's something Dan Campbell, the Lions head coach, would say. You would expect that to come out of his mouth. But Nick Sirianni, who I don't know much about, uh, but, you know, he's motivating his team by the attention to detail with the hot dog eating contest. Yes, Paul. Did you hear Dan Campbell the other day? He had this big cup of coffee, and some guy just goes, how many coffees is that for you today? So you know Starbucks better than I do. Mm. He has, what? what's the biggest size of the Starbucks? A venti. 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 That's like two cups of coffee, right? Because it's so big. Yeah. He has a venti, which is two cups of coffee with two shots in it. And he has two of them, and he drinks that before noon. I like it. Well before noon. Yeah. So that is eight cups of coffee, correct? Basically? Yeah. Yeah. With a lot of <laughs> lot of sugar in there, too. Keep you going. Yeah, Seaton. But I feel like there's, like, office workers all over America who are like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, do that and, like, go sit in the cubicle and uh, work on accounts receivable. But I used to drink four Ventis every morning <laughs> on this show. Yeah. So Dan Campbell has nothing on me. You did that from about, <laughs> I would say, 04 to about four years ago? Um, Five years ago? Maybe. My, my wife just said, look, you you got you to gotta cut it in half at least. Half and then half. Yeah. But I, I now I have a full venti, and then I have half the venti. I'm, I'm having one and a half ventis every morning. But I used to drink four of those in the... From 7.30 till noon. Yes, Eden. You going like oat milk, almond milk, soy? Almond milk. Almond, almond milk. milk? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Almond milk. All right. Yeah. Yes, Paul. When we'd be on the road on the West Coast for this show, let's say like a decade ago, just let uh. people behind the scenes, we would have to get up around 3.45 in the morning to be on set. And there's not a lot of Starbucks open in the 4 to 5 a.m. window, just generally. Mm. But uh, people were assigned to find those Starbucks. And, and it was whenever they're open, you'd be the first one there. <laughs> yep. and like, help them open up. And it would be like, some, we'd send somebody out at like, you know, 5.15 just to find the Starbucks nearest to, uh, you know, where we were broadcasting from. Yes. Yeah, and there would be nothing more crushing than when you're like, you're that guy. And you're like, oh, no, there's a Starbucks right down, like two blocks from here. I'll go get it. And you run over it. And it's, you know, the one in the lobby of a bank or something yes. that's closed. Oh, <laughs> crap. This one's closed. <laughs> Oh, during they... during the pandemic, when the pandemic first happened, we went on vacation for a week and I went up to Vermont and I got up there and I was with the dog. That was it. Just me and the dog. And uh, I just thought, you know, I got to protect myself. I, you know, immune compromised here. So I just go up to Vermont and stay. And then the next thing I think of is what am I going to do about Starbucks? And there, there's no Starbucks, like they don't have brick and mortar Starbucks in Vermont, but they had one in a grocery store about 45 minutes away. And uh, it might've been in New Hampshire, but I would just get the dog in the car. We road trip, I'd go over and then I'd, you know, be 45 to an hour back. I'd have two of them. I'd finish them on the way back. And then I was, I was good to go. It's almost like you start to shake a little bit, you start to panic a little bit. Like, what, what, what am I going to do about Starbucks? When I went to the Olympics 
and uh, in Sochi. It's not like they're, you know, teaming with uh, Starbucks over in Sochi. And then I find out that NBC had a Starbucks <laughs> in the commissary. BYO? Yeah. Well, you just go in there and you order it. It was awesome. It was order your own venti skim chai. Yes, Paul. If someone were trying to give up a, a serious coffee addiction, would you tell them to wean off over like a long term or just say cut it? Well, I went cold turkey on drinking Coca-Cola. And I had the shakes and headaches for about six weeks. And I was drinking four 20-ounce bottles a night when I was doing Sports Center. I would be wired. I would be on fire when I got to Sports Center. And then I would I would call like I'd leave messages for Paulie. It'd be 1230 in the morning and I'd be like, uh, let me just I got to call people. And then I would also play songs and then I would I would try to hit the post on the song. And I would do that into Paulie's answering machine. So songs playing like I knew the song was going to start. <laughs> and then I call Paulie, leave a message. And then all of a sudden I talk right up to the post. And then I just leave these nonsensical, you know, thoughts on Paulie's answering machine. Yeah, Paul. I will find these someday because I have them in a bin. Oh, my God. But you're sitting there. It's like, it's, uh, I'm on 91 South. It's 1245 <laughs> at night. Bono's about to uh, do Beautiful Day, and I'm going to hit the post like nobody's freaking business. Yes. I, I would do things like uh, 1235 and 48 <laughs> degrees at Light FM. Here's Kenny G. And it's an hour drive, so yes. I have like 18 of these. Yes. But I was so wired up. And I'd get home, and then I would have two beers in the span of about 20 minutes to then try to bring me back down. Ah, good times. You know, that's not going to have a lasting impact on my body. No way.